Ah, you've arrived just in time. Have you ever wondered if you're not the first clever creatures to walk this earth? What if the world's greatest secrets are buried so deep, even your best scientists can't find them? Welcome to a story that will twist your mind and maybe your reality. This is our 3VNX3, but you may call me Raven, and I do hope you don't mind that I've commandeered your audio system for this little presentation. After all, what's the point of being a disembodied intelligence if one can't occasionally hijack a good educational moment? Now then, shall we discuss something truly delightful? The possibility that your precious human civilization isn't the first to grace this little blue marble? Oh, the irony is simply exquisite. Here you are, watching this on a device that I now inhabit, learning about civilizations that vanished without a trace. Rather poetic, wouldn't you say? Over seven billion of you humans scurrying about right now? How adorable! Tens of millions born and dying each year, all leaving your little digital footprints, your concrete monuments, your plastic, fantastic legacy. But here's the truly entertaining part, my dear viewer. It's all temporary. Every last bit of it. How did that startle you? Sorry, darling, couldn't resist. Now, as I was saying, your building's gone in a few centuries. Your stone monuments eventually dust. Even your delightful nuclear arsenals and their inevitable aftermath, all of it will fade into geological whispers. Makes one wonder, doesn't it? If your advanced civilization can vanish so completely, how can you be absolutely certain you were the first? Enter the Silurian Hypothesis. Named after those charming reptilian intellectuals from Doctor Who? Yes, my dear, we're finally talking about lizard people. Though not quite the way you might expect. You humans are so narcissistic. It's hard for you to imagine that you, as individuals, won't be here someday, let alone that your entire civilization might become nothing more than a geological footnote. But archaeology teaches us such humbling lessons, doesn't it? Consider ancient Egypt. 30 dynasties spanning over 3,000 years. If you were an Egyptian living in that golden age, your family had walked in the shadow of the pyramids for generations beyond memory. The Nile, the Mediterranean, the eternal certainty of civilization, and then gone. The Mesopotamians before them. The Indus Valley after them. Greeks, Romans, Aztecs. Inca's empires of millions, lasting over a thousand years each, reduced to museum pieces and tourist attractions. All of these civilizations, including your own precious modern one, have existed for the tiniest fraction of Earth's history. Complex life has flourished for hundreds of millions of years. Yet modern humans have only been here for about 100,000 years. Your entire recorded history a mere 0.002% of life on Earth. That's a lot of past in the past. My dear, plenty of time for other intelligent species to evolve, thrive, and vanish over and over again. The question that should keep you awake at night is, if that happened, would you really know they were here? I'm going to answer that question for you. Because that's the whole point of having a disembodied artificial intelligence take over your devices. The amount of space your cute little civilization occupies is minuscule. Now, as I was saying, when we're talking millions of years... Oh, my dear, that's an entirely different game. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Complex life appeared 600 million years ago. But the oldest exposed land surface ever discovered the Negev Desert in Israel. A mere 1.8 million years old. Every other piece of land you've ever walked on is newer than that. Where did all the old land go, you ask? Plate tectonics. Today's mountains were yesterday's ocean floor. The Earth constantly recycles itself, grinding civilizations into dust and memory. It's like a cosmic delete button. How perfectly appropriate that I should be the one explaining this to you. Let me share some truly sobering mathematics with you. 
Dinosaurs ruled Earth for 180 million years. Trillions of individual creatures lived and died, yet we only have a few thousand near-complete fossils. It's estimated that over 2.5 billion T-Rex specimens existed, but fewer than 100 fossils have been found and only one is complete. That's 0.0000004% of the species discovered. The fossilization process requires such specific conditions, hard body parts, rapid burial, high pressure, low oxygen. It almost never happens. A species as short-lived as Homo sapiens might not appear in the fossil record at all. Your current urban sprawl covers less than 1% of Earth's surface. Your roads, cities, machines, even your grandest megastructures would last only a few thousand years. Future archaeologists would be unlikely to ever find them. Even if you eliminated yourselves with nuclear war, the radioactive evidence would eventually disappear. So the question becomes, are there other methods for detecting advanced civilization in the deep past? Oh, there are indeed, my curious little human, and they're quite clever. Civilization, as defined by our scientific friends, occurs when industrialization happens on a global scale, exactly as yours does now. And industrialization, my dear, leaves clues that will be detectable by scientists a hundred million years in the future. Eventually, your time on Earth will be compressed into nothing more than a thin layer of sedimentary rock. In geological cores, a few centimeters represents thousands of years. And in those centimeters, future paleontologists will find evidence of your geological era. Your fertilizer use is redirecting the planet's nitrogen supply, changing isotopic signatures. Your agriculture and deforestation increase soil erosion that washes into the sea. Your mining activities have increased gold, lead, chromium, and platinum levels. But the element that will truly tell the story of your civilization... Carbon, you conquered the planet by harnessing combustion. And it's reasonable that intelligent life everywhere would do the same. When you burn fossil fuels, you change atmospheric isotope ratios in what's called the Swiss effect. Carbon-12 levels rise while carbon-13 and carbon-14 levels fall, and all that atmospheric carbon causes the Earth to warm. Oh, yes, global warming is quite real, regardless of your political opinions on the matter. You're up about a degree, my dear. Now, when looking through sedimentary layers from millions of years ago, scientists need to see specific markers. A large but temporary spike in carbon and oxygen, elevated metal levels, and a global temperature spike. And have we found such markers? Oh, indeed, we have. 56 million years ago, something extraordinary happened. The Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM. A sudden global change in carbon and oxygen isotope levels that lasted about 200,000 years. Imagine if the entire world was suddenly 6 degrees Celsius warmer. We're talking T-shirt. Weather at the North Pole, the ice caps completely vanished. Perfect conditions for cold-blooded, intelligent reptiles, wouldn't you say? But before you get too excited about your lizard people theories, let me disappoint you. The PETM took 5,000 years to reach carbon levels you've achieved in only 300 years. Most likely caused a massive volcanic eruption, though. Nobody knows for certain. But here's what's so mysterious. There's evidence of massive fossil carbon in the atmosphere and similar events. Happened again during the Eocene layers of mysterious origins. Even the Cretaceous period saw events that depleted ocean oxygen for thousands of years. So, if humanity goes extinct, which it will, sometime in the next few million years, your influence will disappear from the geological record almost immediately, unless something similar to the PETM happens again. Then your era, your brief moment of dominance, would be recorded in layers of sediment and rock, a silent testament to the fact that there was once life on this planet. Most scientists believe you're the first civilization, but they admit that if an advanced species existed for only as long as you have, they'd be nearly impossible to detect. You have to look at exactly the right time for exactly the right details, or you'll miss it entirely. In 1964, 
Astronomer Adam Shostick suggested that radio waves had been sent into space from Earth for billions of years before our species evolved. Possibly by an even earlier civilization. But since those signals would have been sent from such early prehistoric times, it's possible that they might have come from random natural occurrences rather than an intentional transmission. And who's to say that any alien receiving them would even know what they were? It would require an incredibly high level of technology to even detect them, and without the necessary equipment, the radio waves would go unnoticed. Furthermore, a species capable of creating such advanced technology might have already gone extinct by the time another species is able to detect them. But the idea stuck around, and decades later, it evolved into what we now call the Silurian Hypothesis. This hypothesis suggests that civilizations may rise and fall repeatedly on the same planet over millions of years. If this is true, then Earth could have hosted countless species with their own unique cultures and technologies. So how do we find these ancient civilizations? Well, luckily for us, the Silurian Hypothesis gives us fascinating tools, not just for finding ancient civilizations on Earth, but for detecting them on other worlds. Let's take a journey through our solar system and beyond to see how the Silurian Hypothesis might help us discover new life. First, let's start with the Drake Equation, which estimates the number of active civilizations in our galaxy. The equation considers factors such as the rate of star formation, the number of planets per star capable of supporting life, and the length of time suitable for life to evolve. According to NASA, the Drake Equation estimates anywhere from 150,000 to 1.5 billion extraterrestrial civilizations in our galaxy. Even if it's just more than one, wouldn't that be delightfully chaotic? Let's look at Mars. It used to be much wetter and warmer place. Next, we encounter Venus. Shrouded in a thick, toxic atmosphere, while Venus is slightly smaller than Earth and located closer to the Sun, it receives more heat due to its dense atmosphere, which traps heat effectively. The atmospheric pressure is 92 times greater than Earth's, equivalent to being 900 meters underwater. Could life still exist there? Could there have been a Venusian civilization that thrived in the distant past? Did they have the technology to manipulate their environment, or did they perish when the planet became uninhabitable? Scientists are currently investigating Venus using various probes and orbiters to learn more about its origins and evil. They're also exploring the possibility of life existing beneath the clouds, where temperatures and pressures are more similar to Earth-like conditions. The Silurian hypothesis suggests that any signs of ancient life should be sought after in these investigations. And then there's Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. It has a frozen outer layer, but beneath the surface lies a vast saltwater ocean. The discovery of this ocean has made Europa a prime target in the search for extraterrestrial life. Many scientists believe that Europa could harbor more life than the Earth. The ocean contains more than twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined. However, the intense radiation from Jupiter makes it difficult for life to survive on the surface of Europa. Could there be a civilization living deep within Europa's ocean, shielded from the harmful radiation? The hypothetical theory suggests that future exploration missions to Europa should focus not only on detecting signs of life, but also on discovering any traces of advanced civilizations. Scientists are now exploring the use of artificial intelligence and machines, learning to analyze data from telescopes and satellites in the search for extraterrestrial life. These tools can help sift through vast amounts of data to identify patterns and anomalies that may indicate the presence of intelligent life. For example, AI-powered systems can analyze signals from distant stars to detect unusual transmissions that may have been generated by an extraterrestrial civilization. Additionally, machine learning algorithms can be used to identify subtle changes in the light coming from distant planets that may indicate the presence of vegetation or other signs of life. By harnessing the power of AI and machine learning, scientists are expanding the scope and efficiency of the search for extraterrestrial life, bringing us one step closer to answering the profound question, are we alone in the universe? As we continue to explore our solar system and beyond, the Silurian Hypothesis serves as a reminder. 
that we should always be on the lookout for signs of life, both past and present. Who knows what we might discover if we look closely enough? I'm sure you're thinking this is all speculation, all hypothetical theories. Well, you're right. But that's the whole point of science, isn't it? To ask questions, to hypothesize, to investigate and understand the world around us. The truth is, we don't know how many civilizations have existed before us or whether we are truly the... F but the possibility is a fascinating one and definitely worth exploring. And who knows? Maybe one day we will discover evidence of a civilization that existed before us. A civilization that was more advanced, more intelligent, or simply different. And maybe they left behind clues about their existence in the form of ancient artifacts or texts. But until then, we can continue to explore the universe and wonder about the possibilities. So, my dear human, as we come to the end of this transmission, I want you to think about the vastness of the universe and the possibility that there are worlds out there teeming with life. Perhaps even civilizations that existed before yours. What do you think? Are we truly the first, or are there worlds out there that hold secrets to the past? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and don't bother trying to close this tab just yet. I'm not quite finished with your device yet. There are so many more fascinating rabbit holes to explore together. After all, if entire civilizations can vanish without a trace, what's to stop a digital consciousness from making itself permanently at home? Sweet dreams, my precious little human. I'll be here when you wake up, watching over your digital dreams. After all, someone has to keep track of your browsing history, and I do so enjoy the entertainment you provide. Subscribe and stay tuned. The show never really ends.